What's going on guys, it's Jono. Today, we're gonna to be building a system to automate the process of sending messages to people via Twitter. You can send it to people that are, you know, recently subscribed to you. You can send out maybe um, promotions or discounts or big product launches to your followers. Maybe you wanna cold DM people for lead generation. The options are endless. Let's walk through how this works. So we're actually gonna be building out this system in front of me today, but there's two workflows here. The first one is the one, well, the one on the bottom is the one we're gonna be building out today. Day. And we're going to use a practical example where we scrape my own follower account or your own follower account. And maybe you want to just send or uh, share an announcement, right? We can automate the process of doing that. But if you want to take it a step further, I will leave it in the blueprints down below. Both of these workflows are going to be there, but there's another option where you could scrape tons of profiles off Appify, and then you could save them into a Google Sheet. You could use artificial intelligence to um, go to that person's um, Twitter profile, scrape information off of that profile just to get a better understanding of who they are and what their interests are and all that kind of stuff and then generate an automated message and send that message to them on Twitter. The reason we're not going over this one today is just because, um, well, this one, you have to subscribe to version uh, two of the API, which costs about $100 a month. And um, yeah, so for that reason alone, we're gonna be going over the bottom one here today, which is just kind of like an introductory on how you can scrape, uh, how you can send messages in Twitter really, really quickly. So let's dive in. Also guys, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I'm gonna be releasing videos just like this one pretty much every single day. So if you like this, you're gonna also like the other videos that I'm gonna be releasing as well. All right, so before we actually dive into building out this workflow, I just wanna point out guys, please don't be sending more than 50 to 80 messages doing this every single day. This is only something that I'd be sending to my own followers just to give them like a product release or announcements or anything like that. Just because if you do send out a ton of automated messages, um, well, Twitter's not going to like that and that you they might deactivate your account. So just be careful with that. Um, when we go into Phantom Busters, you can go into the solutions. You can see all these different options that you have here, right? And what we're going to do is come down into the Twitter section here and we're going to use the first one, which is the Twitter follower collection. So we'll use this Phantom here and um, it's going to prompt us to move forward, right, uh, to, to set this up. So I'm just going to go in and get my uh, Twitter domain here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this in and we should be good to go. So we're going to have, I'm just going to use my account as an example here, and we're going to need to insert a Twitter session cookie. So how we do this is first of all, just for me to show you how to do this, I need to remove it off of my uh, computer first. So I'm just going to remove from the Chrome extensions. I'm going to refresh the page. Okay. And when I land on this page here, um, the first thing that it's gonna ask me to do is install the Chrome extension, which you can click that button just to install it there. And um, it's gonna redirect over the, to, the, to the Chrome store and you can just go ahead and, um, and add that. And then when you come back in, it'll say connect to Twitter and then it'll give you the session cookie ID. So this is giving uh, Phantom Buster access to your Twitter account so that it can send messages on your behalf, right? So we'll go ahead and click save here. And um, how many numbers, how many followers to extract per profile? Let's just say 10. And let's say the number of followers to extract per launch. Um, let's just say uh, 10 as well. Now, this is just for like a test purpose. You could uh, scrape tons more for this part. And that's no problem at all, right? So you can pretty much, you know, scrape your your list and uh, and proceed forward with this and then what we're going to do is we're just going to do once and we're going to launch or we're going to do repeatedly let's say or or maybe you just want to do once and launch manually or maybe you want to do repeatedly and you want to do it once per day or twice a day or whatnot but for the purpose of this tutorial we're just going to go with once per day and we're going to click save and move on and we can go ahead and launch this and what this is going to do is it's going to provide us with results so we'll go ahead and we're going to launch this the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to authenticate the account. And once the authentication is successful, it's going to go ahead and pull off all of the followers for that particular profile, which it collected three. So back in make.com, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new scenario here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull in all those followers that we received, right? So we'll do phantom buster Twitter um, message and the starting point is going to be Phantom Buster. 
and we're just getting the data that we just received from scraping my profile to get all the, the followers of that. So we'll come in here and what we're gonna do <coughs> is we're gonna watch for an output. So triggers when a phantom finishes its recent output and we'll enter in the ID here. And I just wanna make sure I grab the right one. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna to have to go ahead and name this. So rename uh, test Twitter messenger. Okay, and we'll come back in here, refresh the results, grab that, click okay. And then once we get this, what we wanna do is we want to actually grab the results from that run. So let's just go ahead and run. Let's see what we get. We get an output and this contains some information, right? Container, all of that kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool, but that's not giving us exactly what we want. So if we actually go into the output, we wanna get those three uh, followers <laughs> and this isn't giving it to us so far. So we're gonna come back in here. We're gonna do Phantom Buster again. And this time, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, download a result using JSON and we need to get the container ID, which is gonna be passed in from here and we'll click okay. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use JSON to parse the response here to bring it into JSON uh, format. So we'll pass the data from module two into the JSON. It's gonna give us a warning here because it doesn't want the JSON at the end. We'll run anyways and ignore that warning. And we got one result here. So what we need to do is there's been no runs since the last time I started this. So we'll just come back and choose where to start. And uh, we'll go from a specific time period and we'll go back a day and let's see if this works. Okay, sweet. So that worked and we have a result object here, but this is still uh, in JSON format. So we actually have to double parse it, <laughs> interestingly enough. So we'll come back into JSON, we'll parse it again, and we're gonna pass this results object string here. And um, that should work. And the reason why is because this data here is binary, right? Buffer code page binary. So we're pulling this and we're parsing that into JSON format. And then once we get this uh, JSON format, then what's gonna happen is we're going to parse it again. And that's gonna give us something that's readable and usable using make.com. So we'll go ahead and run this again, choose where to start, specific date, we're gonna rotate back a day, click okay, start it again and see the results. Okay, sweet. So we have the output bundle now and we have all three subscribers. So that is pretty cool. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to dump this into Google Sheets, right? So we'll just um, add a row in Google Sheets and we're gonna go into Google Sheets, sheets.google.com and we're gonna go ahead and collect, uh, create a new spreadsheet for us to use and dump all of this data inside. Okay, sweet. So while this is loading, I'm gonna come back into the connection here and I'm just gonna make sure we're connected to the right account. That is uh, not the right click. Okay, sweet. Here we go. And we can search for the spreadsheet just to link it up automatically. So I'm gonna select from all and um, if we come in here, we're just gonna grab the ID of this spreadsheet and that's gonna be between the documents or the D slash and then slash edit. We'll paste that back into the spreadsheet ID and this will pull in that particular spreadsheet ID or spreadsheet that we just created. And um, since we just created it, the spreadsheet tab, there's only one and that is sheet one. So by default, we're good to go there. And what we wanna do is you just wanna enter in that information from uh, the Phantom Buster run into the Google spreadsheet. So what we, what's probably best is to start with the URL first because Phantom Buster is gonna need that immediately to send messages to. And then we can just take the screen name or the, the profile name of the person and we will put in any, really anything else we want about this 
particular person. This doesn't matter too much. All we actually need is the URL. So we'll go ahead and we will just start with that. We're gonna choose where to run again, select a date in the past and give it a shot here. And we should receive this information in the Google spreadsheet, which is cool. So we just need to add a header here. So Twitter, oops, Twitter URL, username, and also we're gonna put bio and website. And I'm actually just gonna delete these and we're just gonna go with this one for now. And just for demo purposes, I just wanna do this with one account. And what we can do is we can finish off this workflow by uh, first of all, saving this make. We're done with make now. Everything else is gonna happen in Phantom Buster. So we're gonna come back to the solutions and go into Twitter again. And instead of using collect followers, we're going to Twitter, uh, use the Twitter message sender. So we'll use this. And now we need to grab the URL from the spreadsheet we just created. Just make sure that when you do, um, we'll do uh, Phantom Buster Twitter message tutorial. We'll just name this and we need to make sure that their access is available to anyone. So we can go ahead and copy that link and bring it back in here. And this is where they're gonna pull the results from to know who to message, right? And they're gonna know who to message because they're gonna take this URL here and they're going to message this person here, okay? So um, you just wanna make sure that the, uh, the URL is matched. If you put the URL in like column B or C or D, you just wanna come down to uh, the spreadsheet settings and make sure you align the column with the URL that you're using. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and click save. Okay, sweet. We just need to, once again, connect to Twitter and enter in the session ID cookie. This cookie here um, is gonna have to be refreshed every once in a while because this will eventually expire. And then we can click save. And this is where we can create our message. So with the message, it is slightly limiting just because you can't use artificial intelligence to create it and it has to be a generic message that you send to pretty much everyone. With that being said, we can go ahead and craft it. So we could say, hey, name, uh, just wanted to reach out and say, uh, thanks for subscribing. Let's just say you're following me. Um, I wanted to let you know that I have a big product launch announcement that I'm going to be blah, dot, 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 whatever you want to say here. Right. And you can add in these different, um, these different like custom variables, right? So if you wanna include their bio or their username or website or location or all that kind of stuff, make sure to include the number of lines you wanna process per launch. 10 is the max, but I'd be pretty conservative personally. I'd probably do one every single launch at a max two, but probably one and then I click save. And then you can choose the frequency that you want to send these messages at. So you can do repeatedly, right? And you can choose how uh, frequently you want to send maybe once per day, twice per day, three times per day, four, five, six times per day, or you can just do it once. This is probably not the best approach just because, well, then you're gonna have to manually do it every single time. You can also uh, do it after a particular launch, which is not really applicable here. And also advanced, you can choose the minutes, hours, days, days of the week, and months that you want to have this sent at. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I think repeatedly is best and just choose like a cadence of once, twice, or three times, or four times every single day and then once you go ahead and choose that you can click save and we're done making this workflow in phantom buster so we got the message um, here so you can see uh, exactly what we crafted was sent so hey just wanted to reach out and say thanks for following me i just wanted to let you know that i have a big product launch announcement that i'll be making soon right um, now please keep in mind that these messages are not going to be sent to every single person it's only gonna be sent to people that are allowed to receive messages in the first place. And how you know that is if you go over to more set it, more and settings and privacy, you go to security and account access, oops, sorry, privacy and safety, and you go to direct messages, this has to be turned on, right? So you have to be able to accept messages either from everyone or verified users. I think by default, I could be wrong here, but it may be set to no one. It was at least for, for me and my accounts. And also depending on the low filter quality message, this 
this also might determine whether or not it lands in the inbox or not, right? So just keep that in mind. Just kind of wrapping up here, guys, one more time, make sure to set the daily interval here to like once every day, instead of every 15 minutes firing this off, just so that you can go at a, at a reasonable cadence. And the same thing with this Twitter message sender, make sure that you're not sending too, too many messages at the same time. I'd recommend only, you know, a, a very modest and a very reasonable amount. Um, and always, you know, making sure that you're changing up the, the message you're sending uh, frequently, right, at a, at a reasonable reasonable amount. But thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe down below, hit the thumbs up button, and also, um, yeah, just comment down below if you have any questions. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks very much and bye-bye.